Okay, guess where you wound up? <laughs> and let's go live radio, right? Another hour on St. Patty's Day, and I got the green, green question mark suit on for you. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> I don't even have yellow pants. I didn't wear green. Actually, I have a full green outfit, too. But uh, this, you only see the top up. It's like like the news show. You know how the guys have jeans on the bottom? Uh, that's right. Well, today we have a great show. No hint house guests. We have a couple online guests or on the phone. Uh, an artist, Christina, who's using uh, a crowdfunding uh, source that's over tomorrow. We're going to make sure you know all about crowdfunding. We got Shane on the line, too. He'll be coming up next. And he's going to show you, like, what you don't know about grant writing that's right you can't possibly know all the stuff grant shane's been doing this for a long time and he's going to tell you all the little you know things that you never thought of about writing a grant then we're going to tell you how how to legally get money from your congressman how do you like that? <laughs> right. You know, he's giving money away <laughs> all over. Well, I'm going to show you how you can get money from your congressman, right? <laughs> and all that. And that's good stuff. And then I'm going to show you, uh, I was down at, uh, oh, South by Southwest. I don't know if you know South by Southwest, the <laughs> big music festival, uh, videos and high tech stuff. Great thing. I ran into a neat guy down there who got a half a million dollars from the government. A half a million. And we'll talk about how he got that and where it is and everything and how you can too we'll be back right after this i believe that anybody in america could start their own business right on their kitchen table with little or no money see anything you're going to do in life is going to take a lot of work but if you really find something you really really want to do and you learn how to use the system you'll get over any obstacle you could start a business on your kitchen table because I'll show you unbelievable government programs that help you write a business plan, apply for a grant, get a government contract, or give you free legal marketing and tax advice. There are no guarantees in life, but I can guarantee that the government wants you to start a business because 64% of all the jobs in this country come from small businesses and 73% of all businesses in this country are small enough to start on your kitchen table. So don't give up your dream. Let me show you how the government will help you start a business right on your kitchen table. <laughs> I didn't know I had the same suit on. <laughs> I, I got 17 of these. Well, on the line, I, I hope she could hear me. Uh, Christina Balonic, you there, Christina? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey. Well, let me put your Indigo website up here. Now, Christina is an artist. Now, she was on the show earlier, actually, one of my first shows. Delightful young lady. She has a... Uh, art gallery up the road here that's very special in the neighborhood uh it's a very urban you know neighborhood here and she took over this uh this uh old store i guess it wasn't going nowhere anywhere and she turned it into a gallery a neat thing in the neighborhood she also has a like a co-op space for artists to come in and work on their uh art you know and then even have a source to sell it on and she encourages the whole neighbor i mean she's a great lady who's not interested in making zillions of dollars but helping folks and getting art out there. Now, what's interesting about uh, her is that she's using fundraising to help grow her shop. So that's why I want everybody out there who's tuned in today to realize there's 24 hours left to help her kick her over the <laughs> over the top to make her goal. And it, it, it's just a neat thing. I mean, I think fundraising is a neat thing. Uh, I think she's terrific in what she's doing and, and helping other artists in the community and herself and the community in general. I guess I should let you talk a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so how uh, is Indiegogo? How, how did you like uh, doing this? Did you do it before? I've never done it before. This is my first experience. I've contributed to other people's projects. Usually mm -hmm. um, I was more familiar with a company called Kickstarter. Oh, yeah. And and then I did some online research and found this other company called Indiegogo that had a little bit of a different model um, where you can also have a fundraiser where if you don't meet your goal, you still retain the money that's been contributed so far, but they just take a little bit more of a percentage. Ah, um, so there's an incentive to reach your goal, but, um, but anyway, it's just been such a surprise to see how many people have pitched in. We've raised over $6,000 so far. We're hoping to get to ten. 
by midnight tomorrow. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no one more deserving, I think, around here than than uh, you and your project here because it's really going to other people. I mean, it seems like what you're raising yeah. funds for is not to put in your pocket or go to Florida or <laughs> whatever. For, right, yeah. exactly. And um, and actually, another neat thing I'm doing is I've I've teamed up with a nonprofit organization called Fractured Atlas, which is out of New York City, and they support artists. Oh. And by what is running What's the name of that? Through, what is that name? Again? Called, it's called Fractured Atlas, and it's actually on my uh, Indiegogo page. I see. Okay. But they support artists and and fundraising for artists, and uh-huh. what they do is they run the money through their company and and give everyone a. a 501c3 donation letter. So all of our donations are tax deductible, which is an added bonus. I see. So as an artist or an art-related, you know, uh, small business you have, you're using Mm -hmm. them to become a nonprofit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that they're our like umbrella. Right, so they have an umbrella nonprofit for you that Mm -hmm. you, so if people donate to you, they could also have a tax deductible. Let me show Mm -hmm. another uh, uh, slide or two. Uh, Why don't you put up number three here, Eric? I want to show uh, some of the <laughs> some of the stuff. Uh, this is her her, her uh, gallery. Look how crowded that sucker is. See, she needs more room. <laughs> Help this woman. Yeah, it's not going to cost you much. Yeah, yeah, look at look at the people packed in there. What's better? Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's better? I mean, that's what people like you is what this country needs. People who are helping mm-hmm. other people, helping the community. You know, and, and look at they're packed in here. More people have to take advantage of her, right? <laughs> to show the next slide. This is my favorite, Christina. Uh, look at this. I mean, you know this, but oh, man, I showed this slide to my wife today, and we, we want these people in our living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fun show. Oh, that's and the we, monsters? We change our window every month or so, so that it's always different. Yeah, I mean, look, at and they're, these are local artists that did this, or what? Yeah, we mostly show local artists and uh-huh. um, the gallery. We try to feature emerging artists, so artists are maybe at the beginning of their career, whatever age they are. Um, and then we also have lots of little merchandise and artisan goods that are made by local artists. Ah, uh, well, that's great. And you've been at this like two years now, so you're not a fly by night, right? Right, <laughs> right. It's been a little over two years, and we're just we were fortunate to be able to take on this building next door that is currently vacant so we're, see. we're getting ready to expand into that so we have more room to do all of our stuff now a- another thing i mean if people contribute they're really not just throwing away money and they don't get anything you got neat stuff why don't you show them the next slide eric i mean some of the things you give i mean what i really love uh the next slide eric uh, number three there we go i mean <laughs> i love how you can get these pump on the, the, the it's a dc uh, uh cheer. yeah right i mean they'll come to your party and, and have cheers for you and and write them up by <laughs> for, that are personalized for your stuff isn't it yeah yeah i mean we have some really fun things on there anything from ten dollars for a vip pass which is if you come to one of our events and uh-huh. turn it in we will have a funny surprise for you or a t-shirt for thirty dollars so you really just you're putting your money towards something that you're going to get something back and then yeah. you, and well, also feel good about investing in the project. Well, I also like your your screen printing classes. I mean, that's yeah. that's neat stuff. I mean, it's going to cost you a lot more to take a, a screen printing classes anyway. And if you miss this, you could still have screen printing classes at your place, right? Right, right. We, that's an ongoing thing we already do. And the class actually is $100. So this was just an incentive for people to pre-purchase. Right, pop, right. Been thinking oh, about it. That, that sounds great. So if you miss this opportunity, you should contact you right at Pleasant Plains Workshop, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, PleasantPlainsWorkshop.com. Do you have other classes too, or not? We will be now that we have the bigger space next door, I see, and right. we've added more artists, and so everyone uh-huh. will be able to teach classes in whatever their expertise is. So we uh-huh. have etching and different types of printmaking, letterpress. Uh-huh. And um, and just kind of arts and crafts activities. We'll have more of that. Now I see you've been pretty successful already because you're you know up to fifty, sixty percent already. So what what was the key to it? I mean, why why do you think you were successful so far at at, at um, using these? I thought I did a lot of um, internet. I mean, like marketing it through Facebook, and I did a lot of dedicated emails to people I knew, and I thought that was um, important. I mean, I had some. You know, I sent an email to old college friends, you know, and they could all see each other on there. And I did, you know, some old professors and 
just different. I've been emailing uh, people this whole time. It's been up for four weeks, and I've just been kind of cyber stalking people. <laughs> I see. So it takes work, right? Is what you're saying. I mean, you just don't put the si- yeah. side up and people throw you money, right? Right. Yeah. You have to keep putting the word out without trying to be. I try not to be too aggressive <laughs> about it. And I also always tell people it's okay if you don't donate, but just watch the video and get excited about what we're going to do. And yeah. Well, that's you can what I mean. Help out by sharing the link too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's why I think the main thing is, number one, it seems like you have good offers, you know, that people get. And number two, I mean, it's a good cause. What you're doing is obviously a value. I mean, not only to you, but the community and the other people you serve, you know. So thank you very much for doing all this, Christina. Thank you. you know. Thanks for, uh, for the <laughs> shout-out. And I look forward to all Look forward to having you come over when we're done. With the oh, yeah, thing. no, anytime I come back and uh, whatever, paint uh, question mark suits or whatever. And so people have 24 hours to get the money in there, right? And it's Indiegogo, <laughs> I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O.com and look for Pleasant Plains Workshop, right? Pleasant Plains Yay, Workshop. Yeah, that's perfect. Right, great. Well, take care. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Let's Go Free Radio. I hope you enjoy this show because I enjoy doing it. And if you want to learn how to start using these programs, listen, I set up a free webpage called UncleLesco.com. You can go there right now and download the five best grants just for your state. <laughs> so that's UncleLesco.com. Go there now, get the five best grants for your state, and start taking advantage of the stuff now. You know why? Because it's free. Also, we're going to take your calls later on the show and answer your questions. We'll answer anything. Man, I could show you a source of money and free help to do almost anything you want to do in life. So what you do is you call 202-643-9006. That's 202-643-9006. And if you don't get through for some reason or the show time runs out, you can always send an email. Boop, did I say that right? Email me at letsgofreeradio at gmail.com. That's Let's Go Free Radio at gmail.com. So <laughs> we want to answer your questions. So call or write. Oh, please. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm back. I'm calling Shane. <laughs> I don't have a, an intern here today, so I, I'm playing intern duty, trying to get Shane on the line. Now, Shane's the guy we have in, uh, he's in Texas. He's in, hi, Shane, are you there? Okay, Shane's there. <laughs> How you doing, Shane? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Well, wonderful. It's cold here now, though. I wish it was in Texas. Actually, I just came back from Texas down in Austin uh, at the South by Southwest yeah. Festival. I guess you know that. You're a hippie. You know, I understand. <laughs> Have you ever been to South by Southwest? Excuse me? Have you ever been to the festival in Austin, the South by Southwest? Oh, no, I have not. I've been wanting to go, but I just haven't made it yet. Uh, I understand. Well, you got to get it. Look, old guys like me go. <laughs> you should be getting there. So what do you got for it? Oh, by the way, why don't you show the uh, app uh, uh, on uh, Shane's app here we got. Uh, he's got an app called igrantapp.com. Uh, it's a little, you know, dollar ninety nine app, all about grants, neat stuff. I'm involved with that too, but <laughs> so I have to, uh, for everybody knows. But no, it, it's cool and, and it, it's very inexpensive, and, and you really learn this process. And like Shane will teach us more of the process today. What do you got for us, Shane? Well, you know, there, there's some uh, tips about grant writing that, that are not really that apparent, and so these are some lesser known tips that ah. we we'll talked about today. Tips for grant writing, huh? Things you don't know about grant writing. I think you sent me a list. So I, I'm going to put up the list as we talk about it. Can you put that up, Eric? Uh, the, the grant writing list. So that would be number eight. There we go. Okay, go ahead. All right, well, the first one is, uh, is uh, it sounds very uh, uh, you know, logical, but you have to ask for the money. And, and, and I think, for instance, we had a... Uh, uh, a person who had downloaded downloaded the app, and she she's looking for some grant money to send her uh, her daughter to a camp up in Maryland, and uh, and so we got to looking around, and and uh, we ended up getting her a grant to pay about for for about twenty five percent of it, just by calling the camp and, and asking 
if the grant was available. And, and sure enough, there was. <laughs> you got to ask. Oh, that's silly. Huh? <laughs> ah, that's terrific. And, and, and sometimes you have to go. And so that, that didn't, didn't cover all the costs. Again, it's about 25%. So, yeah. so then uh, we had talked to her about talking with some of the local businesses, the banks, mm-hmm. uh, maybe the Masonic Lodge, Rotary, Kiwanis. So, so different civic organizations also, uh, especially on smaller grants, so they'll help out usually. Uh, a lot of times they will. So you're saying that if, a, like, she was, you said trying to send her daughter or son to camp for the summer and needed like 500 bucks or something like that for that? Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and she she's low income, couldn't afford it. She had uh-huh. some other uh, other things going on, and uh, so there's no way that she could send her her kid to camp. So, uh-huh. uh, so between calling them and they calling up some of these civic organizations. I think that she'll be able to do it. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Oh, that's a good idea because that you know. So she went right to the camp itself, and they had some kind of scholarship, right? Uh, they did. So, uh-huh. so, so they gave her a grant, and now she's going to uh, uh, you know, the local organization, uh, uh, civic organizations that uh, that have money set aside for things like that. People in need who who have to do things. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and, and, and that's how those organizations, a lot of them are set up is, is to help people out. Uh-huh. And some, and a lot of times that is, that is financially. Yeah, and, and if you don't ask, you don't get it, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the first step is just to ask. And, and it could be the civic organizations, it could be the churches, or even the local businesses and banks. Uh, because a lot of stuff is a write-off for them also, a tax write-off. Okay, what else? What's next? All right, so the, uh, the next one is, is to go ahead and, and try to, this is for state and federal grants or anybody else try, that, that may have funds, uh, try, try, to, try, to, try, try to visit them in person and be, uh, be extra nice to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the reason for that is, is, is these agencies and organizations and foundations, they're still ran by people. Right. And so, and so they're, they're, they're like you and me, that we're probably more likely to, to, to give money to someone who we know and trust and who we think will spend that money the, the right way and then be, uh, be, be, be good with the money. And so you start establishing that relationship with the agency and, and that, uh, or that organization, and uh, then when the application comes up, uh, they're, they're going to be more likely to help you. They're going to take a more serious look at it. And so uh, I highly advise people to, to, to go either try, try, try to visit the person. If you can't visit the person, where you're planning to try calling up on the phone and try try to get a, a, a conversation started. Yeah. Well, it sounds like what I used to do in college when I was flunking a course, I'd go to office hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and go see that teacher and, and try to show that teacher I'm human and I'm not so screwed up as she thinks I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe and so give me another difference. boost to get past that class. Huh? And then the major difference between maybe that 3.0 and that 4.0 right. is having right on that edge. Right. So it's not yes a little bit. Yeah, so it, it hurt. It, so I mean, you're right because when you say that, I think, well, let's say because a lot of state uh, money comes from state capitals. So man, it's worth a hundred mile drive even to go spend a day and talk to somebody because they're going to give you twenty, thirty, forty thousand bucks. What the hell better you got to do? Well, yeah, and, and you have to also think about a lot of these uh, agencies that they deal with are really uh, disgruntled people. You know, folks who are not happy with with the government. So when you go in there with a uh, smile and you're trying to get advice and, 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 and you're treating them like they're the experts, they, they love that. I see. So in other words, when you talk to them or whatever, you call them up and you don't have to get, you don't want to give the, you better help me, you lazy, shiftless bureaucrat, you know, because my tax dollars pay your money. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> right. No, I think you're right. It's really a people business, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. Yeah. And, you know, talking about people business, the, the, the next tip is to uh, to contact your either state or federal congressman, and, and they'll uh, and, and see if they'll send you a, a support letter. And a lot of times on those support or endorsement letters, you have to write up a template. They'll rewrite it, and, and they'll sign it. But they love doing that, doing that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's funny when I – uh, yeah, no, I, I believe it. I, I, I'm going to talk about using your congressman later, and I have a senator. You know, I'm going to show them. You know, the letter from the senator has on a website. Hey, you want a grant or something? Tell me what you want, and I'll write. You know, write me a letter, and I'll sign it. <laughs> you know, they say send me a form and send me a proposal. What you think I should say, 
and I'll do it. I mean, it's just amazing when you think of it. I mean, that's what I mean. When you say this to somebody, you know, ask your congressman, I would think most people think, well, I got to be some big shot or, or whatever, but you don't, do you? No, not at all. You know, uh, I, and you may not talk directly with the congressman, but you'll talk to somebody in their office. Right. And, and they'll, they'll make sure it's all signed. And, and when you send that application in, you're going to be ahead of the game because a lot of the people who are competing for the same money probably didn't do that. Right. And so to have, a, to have an endorsement by a congressman, it's, it's going to weigh a lot. Well, I, what I see, too, the, the bureaucrat giving out the money gets a twofer if he gives it from you to you because he pleases you. You know, as a you know a citizen, but pleases a congressman who gives them their money, <laughs> right? Because exactly. right. that's where they get their money from. And then, and so that kind of leads us to the fourth one, which is send out a press release. And, and this could be about the congressional letter, or it could yeah. be just about uh, what you're trying to do. Uh, if, if you're trying to raise a little bit of money for a homeless shelter, or uh, or, or even to, to send your, your child to a camp, mm -hmm. you can talk about or how great... Or a business, or anything, right? Right, right, yeah. And so, so trying to get out the press release, because that, that kind of creates a sense of that there's community involvement, there's outreach. And sometimes off that press release, uh, you, you'll get people calling you up who, who, wants, who they want to donate uh, to you. Ah, uh, so in other words, you're so, saying, now if I'm right, are you saying that even before you send in the application, you're saying come out with a press, press release that you're going to start applying for grants to do X, you know, improve the business, improve the neighborhood, improve whatever it is, and you send that out a press release, and if the media, and there's so much media now because it's whether it's online, mm -hmm. offline, or whatever, that they write it up possibly, now you have some credibility that you're a real person doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, and, yeah, and I'll take it one step farther. What I did one time is I, once a quarter, I would send the uh, the, the newspaper a uh, pizza. Uh, it cost me twenty bucks. A pizza, you uh, said? Every quarter. But but I, I buy them. I buy the office a pizza. It's a small office, but they they very much appreciate it. I see. It. Now wait, is this called payola or something like this? Is that? <laughs> Do what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, yeah, sure. <laughs> so you, well, you know. It's just, it's good PR. Yeah, is what oh, I call no. it. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, so another thing that you can do also is that that a lot of these agencies they have a lot of money going out, and there's a lot of grants. And so, a lot of times they they, they don't have time to review all the grants themselves. So many times they'll they'll be looking for volunteers to look at the grants ah. and to grade the grants. And a lot of times you don't have to have any great qualifications to grade these grants because they want they want the American citizen to or, or the I see because it's citizen. taxpayers' money, so they want an average taxpayer maybe looking at them. Right, right, and you know I don't know for sure, but I wonder if, if, if uh, you know somebody's upset that they didn't get the money, they can always say, "Well, the peers or citizens of your see. state look at uh, the grants." And, it's not my fault, and right? You can get one, yeah, yeah. But you know, so so with that said, they're looking for people, mm. and so. Uh, folks may want to, to contact the state agencies or, or the federal agencies and volunteer to be a grant reviewer. God, and, that's uh, terrific. And, and that's the way you learn about the system, too, how to do it next time. Yeah, right, right. So so you're going to see a grant that was written successfully, hopefully, or at least a grant. Yeah. <laughs> and so you'll be exposed to it. And, 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 and whenever you get exposed to it, you'll see that you can probably do this yourself. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of these grants are not difficult. It's just a matter of uh, writing uh, mm -hmm. an essay. So, and successful, I mean, actually, if they don't give you a copy, I mean, you can really, you know, go through the Freedom of Information Act sort of and beat on them to get one, right? Right, right. So, yeah, that's another thing is the Freedom of Information Act, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll give you copies of a successful application. Yeah. So, if, if you know there's a program that you want to apply to, you should write the agency and ask them for a copy uh, of the application. And I did find out just recently that, that, that ask for the, for the narrative. And the reason why you do ah. that is that, there's nothing secret in there, but there's a lot of applicants who may not want to uh, to share. Maybe there's a, a specific number that's not public information, so the agency would have to go mark those out. Right. Now, what's a narrative? But, in other words, if you have application, then a narrative, right? Right, right. So, so there's a uh, in the application. There's these things that you have to put in, like uh, you might have to have. Specific numbers, maybe uh, employee identification see, number right, or right, right. a social security number, uh -huh. and, well, and, and you don't care to see that. Uh, right. What you care about is the narrative, right. which is the, the beef. 
that's, that's what they're asking for. Okay, and the last one? The what? The last one? <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sorry. So the last one is very important. Even if you don't get the application, or, if, or more importantly, if you do, yeah. send out thank you notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you notes to the agencies are very important. Or even Christmas cards. I think Christmas cards are also something kind of that, that will make you stand out. Right. Uh, so if, if you did not receive the application this time, when, it, when you apply next time, you'll get it. Uh, or uh, or uh, you might have received it this time. But chances are you may be applying again in the future. So it's, it's establishing that relationship. Yeah, I no, I, I believe. And, and and again, what you're saying, it sounds to me like, I mean, this is a people business. Everybody uses the Internet and all this kind of stuff. But what it boils down to is people are giving money to other people. And, and the more you can make yourself a person and not just a <laughs> an email, uh, the the higher chances of getting the money. Right. And, and, and these agencies, we think of them as the, the big government, however yeah. you want to, to, to look at it. But, you know, it is ran by people. Yeah, sure. they're just so they, they folks won. like you and I trying to schlep through the day. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, Shane. Now, you know what I found when you were saying you're going to do this and talk about the woman? I found a, a video I have of how to get a grant to go to space camp. Oh, Eric, could you run this video? Uh, it's video number. Which one is it? Yeah, that's one. <laughs> it's a space camp. Okay, here it goes. Watch this if you're watching, Shane. Okay, and your name? My name is Alex Ernicamp. Alex! <laughs> and who are you with? I don't know if everybody in America knows what this is yet, but tell them. I am with Space Camp and Aviation Challenge in Huntsville, Alabama. Wow, that's amazing. And is this a non-profit, or is it a government thing, or uh, what is it? It, it is, it's not, for, it's, we're not for profit. Right. We, uh, we, are, we are run by the state of Alabama. Uh, ah. we, we do get assistance from NASA. They help us out with our simulations and missions. I see. And what is it? What, what does Space Camp mean? Well, Space Camp, what we're doing is we're giving kids the opportunity to train like astronauts and wow. aviation challenge we're getting them the opportunity to train like jet pilots we're teaching them wow. about teamwork we're teaching about communication wow. and leadership wow. in real life situations and how long has space camp been around space camp has been around since 1984 1984 yes <laughs> wait sorry let me... like 25 years or so i'm sorry not 1984 1982 ah math who's good at math <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's been a while Huh? Yes, it has. Wow. And Aviation Challenge has been around since 1990. What's the difference? Well, Aviation Challenges focuses on jet pilots, uh, simulators. Ah, the I kids see. learn about how to survive land, how to make fires, how to build I shelters see. out of parachutes. Wow. Space Camp is about flying shuttle simulations, building rockets, wow. uh, learning about math, science, technology. And what are the ages? Uh, the ages uh, for, for kids, it's 9 through 18, uh-huh. but we do have adult programs. So you, you Oh, is it grown up? <laughs> you are never too old for Space Camp. <laughs> Wonderful. Space Camp for adults. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have anyone from the ages of 19, and I've seen someone as old uh-huh. as 84. Wow. See? That's me. <laughs> and uh, I understand there's a charge for the Space Camp, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. there is a charge. Now, but you have scholarships for some kids, right? Abs- absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we get companies to uh, sponsor kids, and they're uh-huh. able to apply for scholarships. And see. some some people are able to come to Space Camp uh through scholarship. Really? So you could come to Space Camp for free! Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> So some kids, you apply for the scholarships, and that's how that works. So, yes. Yeah. Well, that's terrific. Well, it's a great opportunity to meet you guys, and Space Camp, man! <laughs> this is where the real action is! <laughs> well, see, uh, I don't know if you planned your summer yet, Shane, but that's what you could do, you know, for a summer, any you know, age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But also kids could get scholarship to go there. So like uh, the woman you you were talking about earlier, I mean, that would be a fun thing to do. And it's spacecamp.com. <laughs> go to find out everything more about the scholarships. Okay, let's give a, uh, show the app application again, Shane's app. Uh, I think that's number 11. There he is. So I grant app.com uh, and, the pits, and there's opportunities every week that pop up on there ah so you have new ones every week that you're putting on the app right wonderful are, huh? well thank you so much Shane thanks for being there and thanks for being so clear and honest about how this system works and helping people get involved because it's our stuff we might as well take advantage of it right that's right well, thank you Matthew okay take care 
Okay, uh, next. Yeah. Now, look what we're going to cover next. I bet you never knew about this. That you could get, watch the show number 12, uh, Eric, how to legally get money from your congressman. That's right. You know, Congress is giving away money to everybody. Well, now you can get legal money. They could give it to you legally, just like everybody else. Now, I got a series. Okay, a little lesson time here. I got a series of slides we're going to go through just to educate you about what's going on in our with our elected officials and things like that, because it's something you really have to start using. Let me show you what lobbyists are all about in this country. Why don't you show uh, 13, Eric? Okay, this is data that just came out. Now, on the left-hand side, it shows you how much is spent by lobbying. And this is just in Washington, D.C. You know, and it's like doubled in the last 10 years. So the stuff that's spent on lobbying is doubled. And on the right is the number of lobbyists we have. And that has stayed the same. So in other words, people around the country, these are the big fat cats, are spending twice as much money to try to influence you know, uh, the Congress in the last you know, 10 years as a lobbyist. So their income has doubled. So the average lobbyist now is getting like $266,000 a year. <laughs> That's where the money goes because they can't really bribe you know, uh, the, uh, the elected officials so they get that money. So that's why lobbyists are, you know, a uh, hell of a job. That's why so many congressmen, elected officials, if they don't get reelected, they go across the street and become a lobbyist and make a heck of a lot more money. Okay, the next slide, Eric. Number 14. This, this is interesting. It shows you the wealth of congressmen. How much money is a congressman or senator worth? Okay, back in 2004, if you were a Republican member of Congress, and Congress me really means senators and the House of Representatives, you know, a Republican was worth a million bucks and a Democrat was only 647,000, you know, about half. Now, look what happened. You know, since the recession back in 2008, the Republicans, I guess they were all invested in the stock market <laughs> because their earnings took a dive, you know. And now, but everyone's now equal and doing and worth about a million dollars. So we have the average elected official up on Capitol Hill has a net worth of a million dollars. So they're all millionaires. You know, that's why I try to think. This is supposed to be Congress of the people, by the people, or whatever it is. Man, well, these people are all millionaires. Maybe a million isn't what it used to be back in whenever it was. Okay, the next slide, number 15, Eric. This shows outside income. Okay, congressmen are, are allowed to make money. Eric, the next slide. Uh, congressmen are, are allowed to make the uh, money outside. Okay, you see how that's you know almost tripled, you know, in the last eight years, so or six years, like 2004, 2010. So they're triple. So these people on Capitol Hill are making lots of money outside. So the point is, I think everyone out there. You can be just as important as a lobbyist if you learn how to use the system. It's important to learn the system. I mean, see, that's right. Your elected officials are very important in this country on how this country runs, what, uh, you know, where the money goes. Don't forget the government it represents like a third of everything, more than that, almost 35, 36, 7 percent of everything in our country is government. So that money you know, is d dispersed and it's, it's, it's done through the political process and run by the congressmen uh, and senators. So that's why the people always stay in power. They know that. Rich people know that. That's why they're tripling their investment in, con in trying to influence Congress on lobbyists because they want a bigger piece of the pie. Now, I believe that the average person you know, can get their slice. The average person, the Congress gives out about $20,000 in programs to the average family. That's 20 grand. So you're not after millions and millions. You just want your 20 grand back. <laughs> and you don't have to hire a lobbyist who makes a quarter of a million dollars to call a congressman for you. Because Congress knows that your vote is just as important as some fat cat. Sure, the fat cat's going to give them money, but you're going to give them a vote. And if that fact, and if you call up a congressman's office and ask them for a favor and they get you, whether it's a grant or whatever it is, they know that you'll vote for that son of a bitch no matter what they do, you know.
because and you'll tell their friends or whatever <laughs> and everything and, and what Shane said earlier about get a letter when you want a grant and you're applying for a grant somewhere you know go to your elected official and ask them to write a letter now show number 16 Eric this is a letter from Senator Gillibrand or now, she took over Hillary Clinton's uh, senator post. Okay, on her website, she's saying, okay, if you or your organization you know, wants to be awarded a grant or whatever, send us a description of your organization, a summary of the application, a description of what the money will be used for, and a draft letter of support. So you send the senator or the congressman, whoever it is, a letter saying what you want them to tell the agency so they give you the money. <laughs> so they'll probably edit it a little bit or whatever, but they want, you know, they help you. That's what it is. And I believe I grew up in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and I would have no idea that this was available, you know, for an average person. Now, Shane said that today earlier. Yes, you use these suckers. You're paying for it. They're getting a lot of money. And see, the fat cats know that. The lobbyists make a quarter million dollars a year. They're using them. That's all they do in town is use these people. That's what it's all about. See, and they'll pick up your phone call, too, just like a lobbyist, you know. Maybe they won't get invited to a free golf trip and. You you know, uh, Australia from you, but you're, you'll vote for the sucker if they help you, you know, and that's what they're for. Show the next one. Now, the other thing, 17, Eric, uh, the other thing, 17, uh, is that you can casework every, if you have a problem, a problem with an agency, a problem with funding, a problem with anything, look at this is on the same senator's website. It says, if you encounter a problem involving the federal government agency or federally subsidized benefit that you have not been able to successfully call the senator, staff of constituent liaisons will be able to assist you. They have people on their staff. That's all they do is make the system work for you, okay? That's what they do. So why call me? I'm going to charge you 20 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it is. <laughs> you call the elected official. You don't have to call me. You have to know to call these people. And they have a staff who are getting paid more than my researchers you know, to help you. you know, and, and go to the next one, uh, 18, Eric. The next one, 18, a and you'll see the kinds of things they help with. Okay, unemployment issues. If you have dis you worry about disability uh, benefits, employer provided health care plans, and COBRA. So you're getting screwed over by your employer in a health care plan. Family Medical Leave Act. You're not getting, you know, the two months or the two weeks or whatever it is for medical leave. Pensions you're getting messed over on. Unemployment benefits. You think you should be getting more. Federal and state workers comp. You know, you're getting messed over. Or retirement related issues. You can call them up and they'll fight for you for free. Now, listen, even if they lose, even if they lose, <laughs> you, you got to try the free one first. Okay, how about consumer affairs? This is another issue. You can call them up if you have problems with trying to modify your home loan. Who isn't? Who isn't? You can't get a hold of a bank <laughs> unless you take them to dinner. You know, insurance claims, defense, consumer products you've been screwed over on, environmental regulations, air quality or land, water contaminant, immigration issues. If you know somebody from overseas, you know, they probably have a, an issue like that. Go to number uh, 19, Eric. Veterans benefits. Anything to do with veterans. Remember, there's people on their staff there to fight the bureaucracy for you. You know, and, and the bureaucracy is afraid of the elected officials because that's where their money comes from. Their budget, the budget for every bureaucracy comes from <laughs> the legislator, these elected officials. So that's why they have special phones just for when the congressmen and senators call. You know, because when you and I call, we have to go in the front door. When the congressman and senator goes, they go in the back door. IRS issues, you know, you feel unfairly treated. Man, you call them. Military issues. Go to the next one, Eric. Number 20. Health care issues. Uh, you know, anything with health, your Medicare, Medicaid, health insurance problem, insurance providers, the insurance company, your nursing home, hospitals, prescription drugs, you know, all the social security. I mean, that's pretty obvious to people. Social services, anything, you know, like you're not getting your, your, uh, money for paying for your, uh, heating bills and things like that. I mean, go to these people. Show number 20. Oh, uh, let's go. I have a video here. Uh, wait, I'm going to set up this little video I have. Who I went out and interviewed an elected official. It's a state rep. He'll tell you how they help a people. So here, let's run that video. That's number, you know what it is, right? Well, introduce yourself. And you are? 
I am Jean Talley. How, and, and what do you do here, Jean? Um, uh, I am the legislative assistant for Delegate Joseph Bartlett. That's him? I am Joe uh, Bartlett. That, that, that is my boss. In the flesh. Uh -huh. And your full name and title? My name is Joe Bartlett, uh -huh. and I am a member of the House of Delegates representing District 4A, which is Northern Frederick County. Uh -huh. State of and you've been doing this a while. I've right? been doing this for almost 12 years. Wow. Yeah. It must be hard to stay elected that yeah, long. Well, <laughs> you must be doing good constituency work. services. I'm, I'm trying. We are, we're trying. We're yeah. trying. It's a priority yeah. of ours, certainly. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I really want to talk about is like, you know, I think, you know, because this is national, so as a representative of a representative, uh, how people can use offices like this, you know, right. to help their government, you know, to use their government or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I hear that, that you're the ace constituent service person in the office. Well, I do have some, <laughs> I'd like to, I do have some years of experience yeah. with constituent service work. Now, well, what, maybe people don't even know what constituent services mean. <laughs> what does that mean? How does one define constituent service? Um, I would typically define it as an outreach, uh -huh. okay, um, using a delegates or any legislator, but in this case, right. of course, Delegate Bartlett's influence, okay, and of course, that influence is only attained um, through his hard work of becoming an elected mm -hmm. official, his capacity as delegate. Mm -hmm. Through his influence, I am able to place calls on behalf of constituents. Um, whether they call the office or walk into mm -hmm. in the door, um, and who are experiencing difficulties, at times by the time they they call this office, they are extremely frustrated with mm -hmm. their inability to get through to state government agencies. I see. Like, what kind of examples could you relate to? Okay, um, absolutely examples. Uh, of late, we have had uh, innumerable people contacting this office regarding unemployment cases. Uh, All right. So they want you to give them a job or what? They would love for me to give them a job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what all those people are for. <laughs> How do you help them? Uh, uh, well, I, hope, uh, I help them in various ways. Uh -huh. Of course, um, initially I find out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, generally, they are not receiving their un unemployment benefits. I see. Okay, so I would ensure that that individual has filed online uh -huh. because it is imperative that one becomes unemployed that they file I online, see. okay, using the state of Maryland's website mm -hmm. um, and f file bi weekly, even if they are not I receiving see. benefits. It's imperative that they still file a bi, -we bi weekly claim. Mm -hmm. right? So that you help them show and understand the system. Right. Uh, I would that. then, absolutely, mm -hmm. once I made certain that they were doing that, then I would initiate a call to the unemployment office. Oh, I see. So you and actually And in this case, them. absolutely. Yeah. I have developed uh, contacts mm -hmm. um, in just about, I don't want to say every uh -huh. department of state government, yeah. but a myriad, most right. of them, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, I really depend on and count on the contacts whom I've made. Uh, to assist Delica Bartlett and I in resolving constituent That's issues. Right. And I'm very happy to relate that um, more often than not, 99.9% .9 of the time, um, the people with whom I deal in state government, mm -hmm. the contacts that I have made, um, they're very receptive mm. to our cause, yeah. unlike a person picking right. up the phone um, just from their household very receptive to our calls and ensure that my call is channeled to the right person mm -hmm. in order that I can delve into, okay, what is the problem mm -hmm. with this person's unemployment uh, claim? Why is this person not getting their benefits? Mm -hmm. uh, one in particular that comes to my mind is um, a young man who walked into this office approximately four months ago uh -huh. and he had his first um, regrettable uh, an offense um, it was a DUI mm -hmm. back in 2007, and here we are, 2009. All right, all right, yeah. all right. Um, and and this young man was 25 years of age, yeah. and and here uh, again, it was he had fulfilled all of his obligations with with MVA, and um, yet he they were not willing to give him his license back to reinstate oh. his license. Hmm. And um, wow, it's what happens there is that I guess the um, the amount of work that uh, a certain office gets in, in this particular department 
can at times be overwhelming because the state decided to cut back on the numbers of employees. Uh-huh. And uh, when one gets themselves in a situation where they've lost their license, it is necessary for them to complete a packet of information. Uh-huh. That packet of information is very, there's a lot of it. There's probably 25 pieces of paperwork that need to be completed, uh-huh. okay, and completed sufficiently and adequately, submitted back to the Medical Advisory Board at MVA. Uh, reviewed by the medical mm. advisory board there so that they may be assured that this uh, young see. man um, mm-hmm. has overcome his, his problem right. and, and that we can put him back on right. back in So he didn't know about privileges. the whole paperwork and he just heard no, he can't get his license? Actually, he did know about the paperwork uh-huh. and, and he actually had uh, employed an attorney. Wow. All right. When there is an attorney, when we have a constituent uh-huh. who has an attorney, it is necessary for me to contact that attorney uh-huh. to call him personally and ensure that this office may intercede, I okay, for, on behalf of his client or constituent, mm-hmm. all right? And usually that's just fine with the attorney, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. They welcome it. I see. Because they're trying to get through the bureaucratic right. red I tape see. and have not been use all the help they can get I kind see. of thing. Huh. So you were able to make the machine work. He has his license it. back now. Oh, I see. Well, also, <laughs> also, he yeah, actually has it. Okay. Had, oh, yeah, he yeah. has yeah. his license. Do you think he needed to hire that attorney? Um... That's okay. <laughs> 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 How about some other kind? <laughs> we all know a lot of times. Right. <laughs> Would you like me to share another one with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. We had a, a lady walk into this office uh-huh. um, who was overcome with medical bills. Mm. All right. And also That's she... That's prevalent nowadays. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, half the people that are in foreclosure or, because of, or bankruptcy are because of medical bills. Is that right? Wow. And, and yes, 75% that, that percent of those that are um, in bankruptcy mm-hmm. you know, because of medical bills have insurance. So oh, even have well. insurance... Well, in that case, we shouldn't have that problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so go ahead. So they had a bunch of medical bills and they walked in. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she was in quite despair. She was crying. Yeah. And she brought her three children into the office. Wow. And um, what I did is I, I reached out to... Um, well, I, I, I recall discussing the case with Delegate Barlow mm-hmm. in Annapolis. And so um, I, I just... We, this office wrote letters uh, on behalf of her. Right. Uh, just appealing to the um, different medical facilities to whom she owed the money, mm-hmm. appealing that they just look at the case very carefully, mm-hmm. very thoroughly, and if in fact they found it um, suitable to waive mm-hmm. any of the outstanding balances, mm-hmm. um, that's all we asked for is that they just just Consider. thoroughly look at it. And it, it turned out very well. Good. Really? Oh, Abs- good for absolutely. you. <laughs> oh, that's from, I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, that, that's just, what else are you here to do? I, I really don't. Is this the case where I talked to the president of the hospital? That is, I didn't yeah. know if I should say that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yes. It, it, wow. it, it, we, we, yeah, we yes. contacted the, uh, the wow. president of one of the, in one of the hospitals, and he mm-hmm. just wanted to discuss the case with me for some yeah. reason. All right. I called him up. We had a very frank discussion yeah. about, about wow. this, uh, this particular person's. Uh, performance and in, in, uh, being willing to work with them yeah. on the resolution of this bill. They didn't feel like she was willing to work with them. Yeah. They wanted to see some kind of good faith effort yeah. on her behalf to show you know, that she was actually yeah. willing to work on a resolution right. of this. And yeah. after the end, maybe that, that uh, uh, half hour frank discussion, I think we reached a resolution to that case. And, and wow. I, I called Gina and, and I told her to tell this particular person that she needed to you need to show some good faith, right. and I think they'll right. She needed to make a there. few payments, mm-hmm. uh, just $20, very, very, very minimal payments, mm-hmm. all right? And just show that she was willing to work with the system well, and work yeah. within the system. Instead of just hiding, mm-hmm. yeah, but people right. don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You can take the rest of your it's life. It's very <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, when you solve a problem like that, I mean, like, oh, I mean that's... That's why I think it's great about the business. Yeah. Well, it makes yeah, you feel good inside, you know, and that's, 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 that's yeah. it's a lot what I like about this job yeah. is that we're able to yeah. uh, to affect people's lives in a very meaningful yeah. way, and there's uh, there's nothing more special than yeah. that. No, absolutely. No, that's what I like about what I do. <laughs> you have another one? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> she says yes to everything. Yes, <laughs> sure. certainly. I have yes. a, a, just innumerable. Uh, a mother goes to her mailbox one day, uh-huh. Um, a mother who is totally dependent upon child support, mm-hmm. only to see that she's received a letter from the Department of Social Services uh-huh. relating that um, they're going, they have to terminate her benefits, okay. mm. child wow. support payments. Wow. Okay, uh, She has three children, and um, 
very upset and she's crying because how is she going to sustain her children? Okay. Also, uh, the department was looking at uh, terminating um, food stamps as right. well. Okay. In conclusion, what I will say about this case is that, um, and of course, made innumerable calls to uh, my contacts within Frederick County Department of Social Services, and they worked with me extremely well. Huh. And um, we were able to get um, the father of the children's wages garnished. No kidding. Yeah, mm. we'll get the wages garnished. Okay, very fortunately, he was gainfully employed. Uh -huh. Wages garnished, all right. And the only reason why they were uh, thinking or had notified her that yeah. her food stamps and perhaps Medicaid was going to be terminated was because um, the paperwork had become misplaced. So we just wow. resubmitted the right. paperwork. She faxed it to me, right. I faxed it to them. Right. And, wow. Um, and we all, I think, in life have our most memorable times. Uh, I will never forget the time when I could hand a $9,000 check, okay? To a constituent. Wow. For um, from the uh, uninsured workers oh, fund really? wow. in the state of Maryland. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. And it was two days before oh. Christmas. Wow, you're like that's the best Hannah. Christmas <laughs> ever, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you come up to their house with a big check. <laughs> that was the best Christmas ever. Nine thousand dollars. Wow. And it, it was just it was money's due. Wow. Due um, the claimant, um, he had you know it, it was probably a case that was five years old. Yeah. And you were able to mm. finagle that through and get well, it. Well, I, I worked with the um, uninsured insurance yeah. fund in the state of Maryland and um, worked with the attorney. Yeah. And um, we, we got it done. Wow. That's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a quick example of one. Yeah. We had, and this was several years ago, we had a, a family who lost a son in an automobile accident oh, on the Eastern Shore. He had lived here and moved to the Eastern Shore. Son had a wife and a couple of kids, and they had just bought a house on the Eastern Shore. Mm -hmm. And repairs were needed to the house for it to qualify for the loan. And the lender had told this family, um, unless you make these repairs, you're going to lose the house. I mean, he, he had the house already? Well, and they're in the process of buying right. the house. Okay, right. And, and the see. house had to qualify for, gotcha. for FHA right. or whatever it was. Right. And they had been told by the lender that, that uh, they could not make any exceptions and that the repairs had to be made within 60 days or whatever I it was. See. And they were going to lose the house. So they were coming up against this deadline. They called me up, and I called the lender up and just said, "Please, I mean, these people wow. just lost yeah. a, a a member of their family. You know, give them a little bit of time to get their act together here, yeah. and they're going to get it together. I mean, they've been yeah. out there working every weekend and after right. work for the last right. couple of months to get this done." Lender said, "Sure, we'll give them six months." Wow. And it was just that easy for six me, days, whereas they had been told yeah, right. they'd been told, "No, months. we're not going to do it." You know, yeah. so and like mm -hmm. the, the hospital bill from the lady mm -hmm. who came in here. I mean. It, yeah. It, I mean, what I, I see is I get a, no doesn't really mean no. <laughs> right. Yeah. No means try again a exactly. different way. Get some backup and try exactly. again, you know, with somebody by the side. another way to do that. Right, exactly. And that we all take all of these and no, you know. Well, sometimes no is ultimately going to be a no, you know, right. but we're going to make sure that no right. is no. If no ends up being no, yeah. then you can be assured that we've done everything yeah. within our power to make sure yeah. that it was going to be yes. Well, that's amazing. So even when somebody tells you no, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you can tell us. Right. You just take that as amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I'll tell you that's when it's no, exactly. I guess. But. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for being sure, here. Absolutely. <laughs> wonderful. Nice. You too. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Wow. Oh, what do you think of those stories? I mean, they're fantastic. I mean, there's two bureaucrats. One's an elected official, so you know he has the power. The other one is their uh, assistant, who's just an employee, whatever. But you can understand how she has contacts in the bureaucracies that she talks to all the time to solve problems. Like she solved the DWI problem. You know, the person who had unemployment, you know, and, and needed more. How about the health care bill they couldn't get rid of? And they got it down <laughs> like for 20 bucks or something like that. That, very little anyway, that it went away and they had you know, all these health care bills uh, she held with. Or how about the child support, you know, with three children? And this woman on the staff is able to call that agency and make things happen like you and I could never. Or how about the $9,000 she gave <laughs> as a Christmas gift to somebody? I put up that last slide, uh, 22. So use your elected official. Don't, you know, you don't have to be a fat cat, you know, and hire some hotshot lobbyists to do this here for 
the representatives, you go to house.gov. You have one representative where you live. For the senator, you have two senators. So go to senator.gov and you put in your zip code or whatever and you find your local people. You know, and for your state elected officials, you Google and, and just put uh, uh, Google state elected officials. And you go to lesco.com and, and go to non-member section. I have videos. You can watch a longer video of that interview I showed with that elected official. But thanks for coming in there. <laughs> I hope you learned at least one decent thing today. And we covered out a lot of neat topics that you should be knowing about all this stuff because you pay for it whether you use it or not. Soldier Boy Tell Soldier Boy Hey, I got the new dance for y'all called the Soldier Boy Crank that Hey, I got the new dance for y'all called the Soldier Boy I'm Matthew Lesko And I'll show you again free dance lessons Free, free, free You just gotta punch then free. crank back three times From left to right oh. Why me crank it? Why me roll? Why me crank that? Why me crank that? Superman that? Superman! Oh, now why me you? Crank that soul out? 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 Why me? Soldier boy, I've been here, ho. Why me crank it? Why me crank that? Why me crank that soldier boy? That Superman that? Oh, now why me you?